Hello, Mrs. Carlisle. This is Katherine Olson, and today I will be talking to you about the Culper Spy Ring. The Culper Spy Ring was an essential part of the American Revolution, but most people didn't know it actually existed until the late 20th century. But to start off, in the summer of 1776, the British forces captured New York City, and it took seven years for Americans to regain the city. New York was a huge trade port and was vital to the British trade line. Congress decided they needed to find a way to counteract the British in New York. So, General Washington suggested building an intelligence network, and New York was the main target. The Culver Spy Ring was not the first spy ring that George Washington had tried to build, but the previous ones had failed. The best known previous attempt um, was the expedition of Nathan Hale, who was a soldier and a member of the Rangers. He volunteered to be a spy for Washington. His He volunteered to be a spy for Washington, but his attempt to get into New York and gather information was a test run for the future spy attempts, including the Culper spy ring. To make it into New York, Hale crossed the lake between Connecticut and Long Island. Long Island was a weak spot for both sides during the war and was often used by spies and smugglers. Hale pretended to be a traveling teacher, but accidentally told his plans to a man employed by the British and was then hanged, uttering the famous quote, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. The Americans were devastated by this, and Washington used his failure in order to create a better, more complex spy ring in the future. Benjamin Talmage, a former classmate of Nathan Hale's at U Yale University, was one of Washington's first recruits. He soon became the leader of the Culver spy ring, and he was paid by Nathaniel Sackett, whom Washington had told to recruit the spies in New York. So Talmage read messages for him to Washington, but his operation was unsuccessful and quickly collapsed. Not long afterwards, Washington received a message from a man named Caleb Brewster. He had offered to help Washington by gathering intel while on his whaling boats, as well as move intelligence more quickly. Talmadge was sent to Brewster in order to set up the new spy ring, and the Culper ring came to be. Talmadge was very careful not to repeat the past mistakes of those who came before him, like Nathan Hale, in order to ensure the longevity and safety of the members inside the ring. Typically, spies would be from the military, but Talmadge decided to try something new and instead recruited a farmer. The first farmer, his name was Abraham Woodham, Woodhull, and he was the first key operative. And because he was a farmer, he was not, he didn't seem likely to be a spy, and his sister lived in New York, so his visits to New York didn't seem suspicious. And in order to further protect him, he had an alias, uh, Samuel Culper, which the alias gave the Culper spy ring its name. But also another source states that the Culper Spy Ring, also known as the Culpeper Spy Ring, was named after Culpeper County in Virginia, where George Washington actually had his first job as a surveyor. Um, Woodwell was very effective at recruiting spies in the city, and many of these were women, because women weren't expected to be spies during the time period. The most important female member is only, com is only confirmed to be known as three Agent 355, but historians believe uh, this woman is uh, Anna Strong, who is married to Celia Strong. Her husband was arrested early in the war, Celia Strong, for working with the Patriots, and it's believed that she decided to pick up espionage on her own by herself in order to find her husband. So when Abraham Woodhull went to recruit her, she jumped at the opportunity in hopes of finding more, even more information on her husband. Brewster, using his boat, would meet Woodhull in Setucket, on Long Island and he would pick up the information he needed and then sail back to Talmadge. Anna Strong would leave, or Agent 355, would leave handkerchiefs on the clotheslines in order to indicate which code for them to meet at to exchange information. As they got further into the war, their espionage methods became more sophisticated and complicated as to avoid detection. Time was very important and messages then weren't always being delivered fast enough. Talmadge recruited people that would be able to speed up the process. They also set up Areas where they would drop and hide the information and the next person would come and be able to pick it up. They would take the contents to Woodhull and Setucket. In order to maintain secrecy within these letters, the group created a system of codes. This code replaced words with numbers. So I brought my code book, which I purchased from uh, Mount Vernon, uh, which was uh, George Washington's home in Virginia. And uh, it's uh, the actual co copy. Uh, not not like the actual thing, but it has all the numbers that is in the actual copy that you can see all the like numbers and spies and create your own codes using it if you want. Um, 
A few examples of these codes are Washington as Agent 711, Talmadge as 721, Anna Strong or as Agent 355. A list of these codes were compiled and given to each member of the ring um, in order to further keep their messages a secret. The ring would use invisible ink and they would write the invisible ink in between the lines of other inconspicuous letters or on the back of pamphlets and other documents. Most invisible ink, including that of the British, was a mix of lemon juice and water, and when they would apply heat to it, um, it would become visible. The Americans, however, were helped by a British physician later in the war and were able to create a new kind of invisible ink that would only be visible whenever a particular chemical was applied to the paper. Even though they were so careful throughout the war, they still had several close calls and that almost ruined the entire operation. One of those being in 1779, when a local privateer in trouble with the British was trying to find a way to ease off his sentence. So he turned in Abraham Woodhull. The British showed up at Woodhull's farm, but he wasn't there, so they beat his father, Richard Woodhull, who was very wealthy and was the first magistrate of Setucket, which put the town into a rage. Abraham Woodhull was very fortunate to escape and was never arrested, but because of the close call, he was shooken, and he had a close friend that was a loyalist that personally vouched for him and said that he was not a spy. But it didn't only just shake him, it shook the entire ring. Woodhull was extremely paranoid, and he was scared that the British would change their mind and no longer trust their, the loyalists that had thrown them off of the trail. So that was not good for the ring. Uh, another incident that happened was with the letter mentioning Talmadge. It was intercepted by a British. A soldier which alerted them to his role of recruiting spies in New York. The British raided his camp, but only got a few documents in his horse. The documents only alluded to a possible future agent who had not yet worked for the Americans, who I personally think may be Samuel Culper uh, Jr. or Robert Townsend. Despite the scares, they continued to grow their ring in 1779 by choosing someone who was an important part of the local community in New York, a man named Robert Townsend who would eventually be known as Samuel Culper Jr. And they had this man take over some of the critical duties from Woodhull because Woodhull was unable to operate as effectively because he was very scared. Townsend lived in New York City and he ran many local Brit businesses that British soldiers would often come to. Um, no one suspected him to be a, a spy because he co-owned, which would be even harder to spy, he co-owned a popular loyalist coffee house, and he even used to be an extreme loyalist. He turned away from the British when soldiers harassed his family, and when they invaded New York, it severely affected his business. Um, he did not want anyone to know who he was, so not even George Washington knew his true identity. Um, Townsend could easily move among the loyalists and the British during the war, which was vital to the revolution. They discovered that the British were inflating American currency with uh, counterfeit money in order to destroy the economy. And they were able, also able to inform Washington of the number of troops the British had, the names of commanding officers, and the dates and locations of future attacks. They weren't always in time, but in the second half of the war, they did a great job of warning Washington about raids from the British commander, General Clinton. They were even able to warn the French who were arriving in Rhode Island to support the American Revolution that the British were going to attack them. The speedy intelligence allowed the French and American forces to prepare and save the day. Uh, unfortunately, the Culper spy ring's activities were very severely affected by Benedict Arnold's betrayal. Um, when he betrayed the Americans and turned to the British, it was a tragedy and it was unexpected because he was an American war hero and a huge patriot before that. Um, he actually switched sides when he married a loyalist, Peggy Shippen. She was only 18 and he was 38 and he got passed over for promotion by General Washington in the American Army. Washington placed him in charge of, New York, in, of West Point in New York, but Arnold was planning on handing it over to the British. This would have changed the whole course of the war, but Talmadge already knew from his intelligence that a highly ranked patriot had betrayed them. Uh, Arnold was discovered before he could hand over West Point, but some of the information he provided to the British was incredibly damaging. After hearing what Arnold had to say, the British arrested a patriot spy in New York. This man's name was Mulligan. Mulligan, uh, uh, Hercules Mulligan. He worked, um, he worked as a spy under Alexander Hamilton, um, but he also worked closely with the Culper Ring. After finding out 
After finding out that uh, Mulligan was arrested, the entire ring was disheveled once again because they did not know how many spies names, names were given up by Arnold. So the Culper Ring's operations came to a halt in, in order to protect all of the members. Luckily, Talmadge had done a very good job at hiding most of their identities with Samuel Culper, Samuel Culper Jr. And the numbers that are in the book, they were good to begin operations again. But they quickly ran into problems again when the Americans were running out of money and Washington had to cut funds to the ring. Uh, the British, with Arnold's help, also were trying even harder to round up Patriot spies. And they did this by creating extra military checkpoints between the routes and recruiting even more of their own spies. In uh, the summer of 1781, the ring stopped sending detailed reports to Washington, and until the end of the war, Woodhull and Townsend would only send basic letters. In 1783, the spies returned to their ordinary lives, and they never mentioned the ring again. Although many letters survived the war, the existence of the ring only came to be known to the public in the 1930s. More recently, the ring has become much better known due to the popular AMC show Turn, uh, but the ring members were never recognized for the risks they took when they were alive. But historians now recognize the Culver Ring as one of the most important things that helped us win the American Revolution. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, I have a few more of my visuals and sources here that I have these books on uh, Kindle. I used for that and those were links and of course this as well. Thank you.